The Central Pacific Railroad was a rail company chartered by U.S. Congress in 1862 to build a railroad eastwards from Sacramento, California, to complete the western part of the first transcontinental railroad in North America. Incorporated in 1861, CPRR ceased operation in 1885 when it was acquired by Southern Pacific Railroad as a leased line. Following the completion of the Pacific Railroad surveys in 1855, several national proposals to build a transcontinental railroad failed because of the energy consumed by political disputes over slavery. With the secession of the South in 1861, the modernizers in the Republican Party controlled the U.S. Congress. They passed legislation in 1862 authorizing the Central Rail Route with financing in the form of land grants and government railroad bond, which were all eventually repaid with interest. The government and the railroads both shared in the increased value of the land grants, which the railroads developed. The construction of the railroad also secured for the government the economical safe and speedy transportation of the mails, troops, munitions of war, and public stores, CPRR, Regional Chief Assistant Engineer L.M. Clement and Chief Engineer T.D. Judah, 1865 San Francisco Pacific Railroad Bond approved in 1863 but delayed for two years by the opposition of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors plan by Theodore Judah. The Central Pacific Railroad was authorized by Congress in 1862. It was incorporated in 1861 by Judah and the Big Four, Sacramento, California businessmen Leland Stanford, Collis Huntington, Charles Crocker, and Mark Hopkins. Stanford was elected president, Huntington vice president in charge of fundraising and purchasing, and Hopkins treasurer. Crocker was in charge of construction, which began officially in 1863 when the first rails were laid in Sacramento. The Truckee River at Verde, Nevada, c. 1868-75. When the Central Pacific Railroad reached its site in 1868, Charles Crocker pulled a slip of paper from a hat and read the name of Giuseppe Verdi. So, the town was named after the Italian opera composer. Construction proceeded in earnest in 1865 when James Harvey Strawbridge, the head of the construction workforce, hired the first Cantonese emigrant workers at Crocker's suggestion. The construction crew grew to include 12,000 Chinese laborers by 1868, when they breached Donner Summit and constituted 80% of the entire workforce. The Golden Spike, connecting the Western Railroad to the Union Pacific Railroad at Promontory, Utah was hammered on May 10, 1869. Coast-to-coast train travel in eight days became possible, replacing months-long sea voyages and lengthy, hazardous travel by wagon trains. In 1885 the Central Pacific Railroad was acquired by the Southern Pacific Company as a leased line. Technically the CPRR remained a corporate entity until 1959, when it was formally merged into Southern Pacific. The original right-of-way is now controlled by the Union Pacific, which bought Southern Pacific in 1996. The Union Pacific Central Pacific Main Line followed the historic overland route from Omaha, Nebraska to San Francisco Bay. Chinese labor was the most vital source for constructing the railroad. Most of the railroad workers in the West were Chinese, as white workers were not willing to do the dangerous work. Fifty Cantonese emigrant workers were hired by the Central Pacific Railroad in February 1865 on a trial basis, and soon more and more Cantonese emigrants were hired. Working conditions were harsh, and Chinese were compensated less than their white counterparts. Chinese laborers were paid $31 each month, and while white workers were paid the same, they were also given room and board. In time, CPRR came to see the advantage of good workers employed at low wages, Chinese labor proved to be Central Pacific salvation. Advertisement for CPRR first mortgage bonds, Chinese workers complete a building near the Secret Town Trestle. Placer County, California, c. 1869. Photo, Carlton Watkins, The Last Spike, painting by Thomas Hill construction of the road was financed primarily by 30-year, 6% U.S. government bonds authorized by SEC. 5 of the Pacific Railroad Act of 1862. They were issued at the rate of $16,000 per mile of track grade completed west of the designated base of the Sierra Nevada Range near Roseville. See it where California state geologist Josiah Whitney had determined were the geologic start of the Sierra's foothills. Sec. 11 of the Act also provided that the issuance of bonds shall be treble the number per mile for track grade completed over and within the two mountain ranges at this rate. And doubled per mile of completed grade laid between the two mountain ranges. The U.S. government bonds, which constituted a lien upon the railroads and all their fixtures, 
were repaid in full by the company as and when they became due. Sec. Tenant of the 1864 Amending Pacific Railroad Act additionally authorized the company to issue its own first mortgage bonds in total amounts up to that of the bonds issued by the United States. Such company-issued securities had priority over the original government bonds. Sec. 3 of the 1862 Act granted the railroads 10 square miles of public land for every mile laid, except where railroads ran through cities and crossed rivers. This grant was apportioned in five sections on alternating sides of the railroad, with each section measuring 0. 2 miles by 10 miles. These grants were later doubled to 20 square miles per mile of grade by the 1864 Act. Although the Pacific Railroad eventually benefited the Bay Area, the city and county of San Francisco obstructed financing it during the early years of 1863-1865. When Stanford was governor of California, the legislature passed on April 22, 1863, an act to authorize the Board of Supervisors of the City and County of San Francisco to take and subscribe $1 million to the capital stock of the Western Pacific Railroad Company and the Central Pacific Railroad Company of California and to provide for the payment of the same and other matters relating thereto. On May 19, 1863, the electors of the City and County of San Francisco passed this bond by a vote of 6,329 to 3,116, in a highly controversial special election the city and county's financing of the investment through the issuance and delivery of bonds was delayed for two years, when Mayor Henry P. Kuhn, and the county clerk, Wilhelm Lowy, each refused to countersign the bonds. It took legal actions to force them to do so. In 1864 the Supreme Court of the State of California ordered them under writs of mandamus, the people of the State of California ex rel the Central Pacific Railroad Company v. Henry P. Kuhn, Mayor, Henry M. Hale, Auditor and Joseph S. Paxson, Treasurer, of the City and County of San Francisco. 25 California 635, and in 1865. A legal judgment against Lowy, the people ex rel the Central Pacific Railroad Company of California versus the Board of Supervisors of the City and County of San Francisco, and Wilhelm Lowy, Clerk 27 California 655, directing that the bonds be countersigned and delivered. In 1863 the state legislature's forcing of city and county action became known as the Dutch Flat Swindle. Critics claim the CPRR's Big Four intended to build a railroad only as far as Dutch Flat, California, to connect to the Dutch Flat Donner Pass Wagon Road to monopolize the lucrative mining traffic. And not push the track east of Dutch Flat into the more challenging and expensive High Sierra effort. CPRR's chief engineer, Theodore Judah, also argued against such a road and hence against the Big Four fearing that its construction would siphon money from CPRR's paramount Trans-Sierra Railroad effort. Despite Judah's strong objection, the Big Four incorporated in August 1863 the Dutch Flat Donner Lake Wagon Road Company. Frustrated, Judah headed off for New York via Panama to raise funds to buy out the Big Four from CPRR and build his Trans-Sierra Railroad. Unfortunately, Judah contracted yellow fever in Panama and died in New York in November 1863. A replica of the Sacramento, California Central Pacific Railroad Passenger Station is part of the California State Railroad Museum, located in the old Sacramento State Historic Park. Nearly all the company's early correspondence is preserved at Syracuse University, as part of the Collis Huntington Papers collection. It has been released on microfilm. The following libraries have the microfilm, University of Arizona at Tucson, and Virginia Commonwealth University at Richmond. Additional collections of manuscript letters are held at Stanford University and the Mariner's Museum at Newport News, Virginia. Alfred A. Hart was the official photographer of the CPRR construction. CPRR No. 113 Falcon, a Danforth 440, at Argenta, Nevada, March 1, 1869 The Central Pacific's first three locomotives were of the then common 440 type, although with the American Civil War raging in the east. They had difficulty acquiring engines from eastern builders, who at times only had smaller 424 or 422 types available. Until the completion of the transcontinental rail link and the railroad's opening of its own shops, all locomotives had to be purchased from builders in the northeastern U.S. The engines had to be dismantled, loaded on a ship, which would embark on a four-month journey that went around South America's Cape Horn until arriving in Sacramento where the locomotives would be unloaded, reassembled, and placed in service. Locomotives at the time came from many manufacturers, such as Cook, Schenectady, Mason, Rogers, Danforth, Norris, Booth, and McKay and Aldous, 
among others. The railroad had been on rather unfriendly terms with the Baldwin Locomotive Works, one of the more well-known firms. It is not clear as to the cause of this dispute, though some attribute it to the builder insisting on cash payment. Consequently, the railroad refused to buy engines from Baldwin, and three former Western Pacific Railroad engines were the only Baldwin engines owned by the Central Pacific. The Central Pacific's dispute with Baldwin remained unresolved until well after the road had been acquired by the Southern Pacific. In the 1870s, the road opened up its own locomotive construction facilities in Sacramento. Central Pacific's 173 was rebuilt by these shops and served as the basis for CP's engine construction. The locomotives built before the 1870s were given names as well as numbers. By the 1870s, it was decided to eliminate the names and as each engine was sent to the shops for service, their names would be removed. However, one engine that was built in the 1880s did receive a name, the El Gobernador. Construction of the rails was often dangerous work. Towards the end of construction, almost all workers were Chinese immigrants. The ethnicity of workers depended largely on the gang of workers slash specific area on the rails they were working. The following CP engines have been preserved, the Governor. Stamford Locomotive, one of the locomotives preserved 1861 CPRR logo gilded staff uniform button 1862 1863, 1864, 1865, CPRR journal. Cover end of the track near Humboldt River Canyon, Nevada, 1868 Summit Station at Sierra Nevada 1865, 1866, 1867 Summit Tunnel. West Portal 1868, 1869, 1870, 1876, 1877, 1883, 1885, 1888, 1899, 1959. Thanks for watching.